So what you're watching here is a speed sculpting session from one of our incredible modelers, Amir Karim, who, um, interestingly enough, has never used Cinema 4D before this session. Um, what's really exciting now with the um, sculpting tools and the new modeling tools is that we finally have the capability to have a full character or sculpting and modeling workflow. That's right, we can actually topologize, we can actually build up um, base meshes that have good topology. We don't have to go outside to um, other programs anymore to get something that we can go ahead and start rigging and start animating with. Um, what's interesting about this, Amir, the modeler and sculptor, is uh, really used to using ZBrush. But um, as he was working with this um, for the very first time, he was able to go through and edit a lot of the standard tools, especially something like the Wax tool. And um, with all the different adjustments that he can make, he was able to basically recreate what he liked to use as one of his base brushes all the time, uh, um, specifically created clay brush in ZBrush. Um, so it, it, it was kind of neat to see somebody who had really never used the program short of maybe a day or two's worth of tutorials go through and um, kind of blow us away with how fast he's able to adopt the, the sculpting tools, which personally I feel like haven't really been explored all that much by most of us who are used to using cinema every single day. It's actually kind of an inspiration to see somebody who's just a great sculptor, who's a great artist, um, adapt to tools he's never used before. In R16, we have a couple new um, features. One of the coolest features that I thought it may slip past a lot of people is that we have the ability to do spline snapping on our sculpt. So if you actually drew out a, uh, a spline, say something for like that would be a bracelet along the surface of your mesh, you can actually pull, you can push, you can smooth if you turn snapping on along that. Um, I think it's going to be really great for characters, but I also think it's going to be something that's going to be really great to add detail to hard surfaces. Um, if you want to add in the kind of sense of like wires or cables, but you don't necessarily want to model all of them, but you just want to create displacement level detail, it's going to be really exciting to see how people actually adopt that. Another tool that's going to be really useful for creating base meshes and retopologizing is hidden away, kind of buried at the very end of the list of tools for um, sculpting is an unsubdivide button. Say you get a high res mesh that's kind of out of control, that's a lot, a lot of topology, and you need to reduce it down so that you can start unwrapping and that you can start possibly going in and sculpting back on top of it. Unsubdivide tool is pretty amazing. Um, get your mesh set up, click on subdivide, subdivide and then it will recursively de-res the mesh all the way to the point where it hits a triangle. What's really cool about it is that its intention is actually to still work with the sculpting tools um, and it will allow you to actually get multiple levels of subdivision going back up. It was uh, incredibly helpful to use on uh, fast turnaround projects.